Said we have a gentleman who is a darling to South African football. He continues to be loved by fans across the board and even from teams that he's never played for. All right, so yes, uh, the gentleman is joining us in the studio. He will be uh, telling us about his journey in football and everything else that we want to know about. This the one and know. All right, it is uh, the one and only Dane Kate in the studio. Oh, 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 oh. Dane, good morning and welcome to mm. Josie FM. Good morning and good morning to all the listeners. Are you well? No, I'm very well, thank you. Bro, we are well. Punctuality, bro. Dude, uh, yeah. we're yet seven. Is, is it a discipline thing? Is it a sporting thing? Is it just a dinky thing? <laughs> You know, in Joburg and in traffic, you know, you avoid traffic, you leave earlier right. so that you can then relax. You'll uh, never know I hate the, rushing. With the yeah. load shedding as uh, well. And I knew where I was coming to, a lot of taxis around, so <laughs> <laughs> I like to give myself time to be patient that. enough and not right. frustrate myself. On Thank you for making it to studio though, you know? Yeah. Uh, because we battle, I know you're busy, we battle to get some people to just come in, in studio because they're busy. But you made it here, man. Yeah, no, it's just, no, it's just, thank you for the invite. Thank yeah, you for the invite. Dane, I love it's good you. being here. It's good Dane, being here. I love you. That's a lot. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Dane, for, for a lot of people that follow football, uh, the name Dane Clade is not a surprise, but for some, uh, the question would be, who is Dane Clade? So, we want you to take us back home, you know, to the Clade household, uh, before there was Dane Clade, the footballer, right? Yeah, so young boy, uh, like everybody else, uh, right. uh, grew up in the street, playing all kind of sports in the street. Where, where, uh, which streets? Port Elizabeth, Galvandale. Ah. Um, a very, very well-known place. Yes. Uh, a lot of uh, sports heroes came from mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. uh, cricketers, soccer players. Uh, so I think, yeah, uh, growing up in, in, in Galvandale from a very, very young age, going to yeah. school there, playing soccer there for a local club called Glenville Celtic. Right. Uh, when I was eight years old, I started sure. playing um, uh, so soccer for a club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after that, after after that, it's just, it was just um, I think uh, training five times a week compared to everybody else doing it twice a week. Mm -hmm. I think that was the difference from a very very young age. So mm -hmm. on the weekends I would be having to having five sessions and I'll sure. be playing against cup boys as trained once or twice or I yeah. didn't train at all. Yeah. You know, and I'll just run past him with eight 8 I'll score five goals and <laughs> you know, that's how I go. Goal. <laughs> at the age of eight. <laughs> that's amazing. But um, at home, who's there? You know, your upbringing is the mommy, daddy, yeah. granny, you know, uh, your siblings uh, take us to the family. Yeah, structure. so, uh, yeah, I grew up in my granny's house. Okay, uh, okay. You know, um, my mom um, was married um, to my dad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for ten for ten <laughs> years. So, right. Yeah, so my dad. yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I grew up in a house. My mom had um, sisters. She had. Um, there were four sisters in the house yeah. and yeah. two brothers. So there were six of them. And then yeah. it was my grandfather and then my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but I grew up with my. I, I stayed in my granny's house. Mm. Uh, my mother didn't stay there. Mm. Uh, so. Mm. I'm more of a granny's boy than anything else. Panagako, yeah. all right. <laughs> so, so um, we, we got a message from one of the Kai FM sport journals and says, mm. this is one of the best cricketers that we have, you know, and it, it was a bit, a bit of a mind boggle for yeah. someone who doesn't know that uh, besides you being a shining star in football, you are also super amazing in cricket. Yeah, so I grew up um, playing cricket in the summer and mm. then and winter it was soccer. Right. So I came at a crossroads, I think when I went to high school, I mm -hmm. had to choose am I going to play cricket or am I going to play soccer. Mm. Uh, the passion for soccer was more, Okay. Uh, but since a very, very young age, I think I was four or five years old, Yeah. Uh, my mom used to work at the scoreboard at St. George's Park. Oh. So the old scoreboards we used to have to put in the, yeah, the yeah, numbers, 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 not the digital yeah, ones that you yeah. see yeah. now, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I became an avid fan of cricket. Yes. Um, we went to St. George's Park all the time with the whole family, mm -hmm. the boxing day test matches and, and all those type of things, yeah, you know, yeah. so, um, yeah, I grew up in a, pretty much in a sporting, uh, surround, my surroundings was, was all about sport, you know, right. all about being right. in the street, you're in the street, if it was Wimbledon playing, you played tennis in the street, yeah. if it was mm -hmm. Rugby World Cup playing, we're playing rugby in the street with a stick, you know. Uh, I see you still playing it, I see you still yeah. play cricket, there's a friend of mine called Ayanda. Yes. And I uh, follow him on Instagram and I would see you guys yeah. with the, you still play cricket and yes, stuff Yes, like yes, so, so with Deal Dan, I play for Deal Dan. Um, yeah. We always have a good rivalry with Fat Cats. Um, mm -hmm. a good rivalry there with a couple of friends, you know, yeah. uh, that we always um, uh, have good banter. Yeah, uh, but yeah. it's it's a good it's social it's social cricket, you know. So right. it's all about fun right. and it's all about enjoying the game. Yeah. And it's all about the uh, brides and the families and nice. you know. So yeah, that's what we up to on weekends, you know. And yeah. obviously playing in the LMS in, in, in Johannesburg as well. It seems like it was a thin line between 
uh, you becoming a professional cricketer versus uh, a football star? <laughs> what, yeah. what, what was the deciding factor? What was that one thing that you said? Because you said there was more passion. Yeah. But what was that deciding factor that said, I'm going to go into football as much as I could really just do so well in cricket? Yeah. So I had to make a decision in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 where my where my kids are now, my both both my boys, they're yeah. grey. Right. Uh, the one is grey high now. He's in mm -hmm. eight, and the other one is still in grey junior. He's, so he's your kids six. go to the school you went to. No, the, I was supposed to go. Oh, were you school, supposed so to? I was go offered to a scholarship for cricket. Oh, okay, uh, okay. I declined it. What? Purely because they didn't have soccer. <laughs> Oh, they didn't have soccer, right, school, so you can. Right. And some of my friends uh, that I played with and grew up with, yeah. the same area, went to that school and they stopped mm -hmm. playing soccer. And oh. I said to my mom, oh, "Well, I'm not going to go." Didn't there. you get in trouble for that though? No, no. Saying it's no, a scholarship, no. Dane. What did you No, not at all. Yeah. I went. I went to the local high school, Galvandale High School. Yeah, uh, I yeah. got to play cricket and soccer. Oh. Wow. And then yeah. uh, within two years after that, and then the school of excellence came along, and then I ended up playing soccer. I mm. went to soccer school, and and I wanted to go to soccer school. And you were excellent. So <laughs> you, and I, I don't regret. I don't, I don't regret. I don't regret it at all. You Absolutely. Know? So you you're probably one of the most decorated players at the PSL, having won all the PSL competitions from your days at Verts, where would you say uh, that, uh, you know, uh, your best football days were, you know, in terms of just looking at it? Because you, you really just had such, still have such a great uh, football career. Yeah, I think from the start of my career uh, at Supersport, and mm -hmm. then obviously moving to Pirates as well, and uh, getting to play for Verts again. And yes. I think if I, if I put everything in a nutshell, throughout the 16 seasons that I was in the PSL, mm -hmm. I think that I, I was on top of my game all the time. Yes. Uh, but the, the peak definitely, you know, when I was super sport, winning all that league titles and moving to Pirates. Yeah. And so mm. winning the league five times in a row, I think that was the golden era for me. You know, sure. and especially yeah. especially for at, at super sport three in a row and then Orlando Pirates again, uh, winning it twice in a row, and, yeah. which yeah. Made, made it five. And then obviously moving on to Wits again uh, and doing it again at Wits as well. So I think <laughs> in a nutshell, you know, if I, if I have to, I have to say the bundle of my career must go together as one. Absolutely. Okay. All right, that, that's a smart answer because you didn't want to choose one, you know. We see what you did there. Very nice and tidy, Mr. Clayton, loving it. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's talk about discipline, you know, in football. So uh, we've seen a lot of players, you know, falling by the byway. There's a lot of girls that come with it. There's a lot of money that comes with it, fast cars that come with it. And, uh, you know, um, maintaining uh, the Dane Clayton, you know, what, what, what did it take from you? Is it just a, I'm a Dane Clayton, I'm, I'm disciplined like that? Or did it really take some work? to getting to where you are now? I think it's a lot of work. I think it's a lot of sacrifice. I think it's uh, what you do, how you do it, when you do it, where you do it. Yeah. It becomes important. But you, you know? do it. No? Yeah, you, you have to go out. You have to enjoy You have to enjoy life because right, it's also right. about enjoying the now. Absolutely. Uh, we've lost people. You know, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you yeah. always go out and you try and have, have, have the best time, but responsibly so. Mm. You know, so mm. there's a way of doing things. I sure. think I went out a lot. Yeah. You know, oh. um, and I mean, my wife will know we used to go out together. Yeah. Right. But when we go out, so I would play and then we would win. Yeah. And then uh, I'd go out and celebrate. And celebrate your but when I lose, I don't want to go anywhere. Even if I planned everything, <laughs> yeah. I would say to them, listen, guys, yeah. I'm not going to spoil the party for you. Right. You guys go. I will stay down. Yeah. Right. You know, so it's all about when, how, and what you do. Is when, it that when personal, you though, when you lose a match or maybe a huge match? And mm. Is it that deep that you me, say, you know what, yeah. I don't want anything? Now. Yes, to me, to me, I was like that. You know, um, I hated losing. Uh, I, don't, I didn't see the need to be out and about uh, mm. when, I, when I lost. I, I, I felt it. Yeah, I cared about it. Right. You know, so when I lost, I would go home and I would go and watch the match, or I would go and watch a movie, or mm. just have a bright. Mm. I, yeah. I don't want to be seen in public. I don't want to be asked questions in public. I just wanted to be by myself and, you know, <laughs> give me a couple of days by Monday when I go back to training. <laughs> and, you know. Right. But let's talk money issues because it's a yeah. big thing. You know, there are also a lot of youngsters that are not maybe even getting into football, but other. Uh, you know, sp uh, spheres of art, whether they're going to music and that and that. We find that it's so difficult for uh, you being a star at that young age to make the correct financial decisions. Uh, you know, was there any mentoring and guiding in terms of that? Or how were you able to, to, to adjust yourself uh, when it comes to money issues? I think, I think the way we grew up, you know, uh, I think all of us in this room are <laughs> basically the same. As, it becomes first generational. You know, the type right. of money you earn, the type of lifestyle mm -hmm. you're exposed to mm -hmm. all of a sudden. I'm in Johannesburg. None of my family members was ever in Johannesburg other than me moving yeah. here at a very, very young age. So, right. Um, I had to learn 
a lot as as I went along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was advice, there was policies, mm-hmm. there's, there's was financial advice is like, coming. Were they like very very bad? Yeah, there's that you look at and you're like yo. What was I doing there? I think yes. I think there was bad decisions. I think the loving the now versus saving for the future ah, mm. becomes yes, a little yes, bit yes. of a it, it becomes tricky. Yeah, mm. you know. True. So do I buy the GTI mm. or do I just keep the Polo? Yeah, yes. you know. Uh, uh, do you want to love the now? GTI, you know, right. and then you have advice, and then your parents is like, "Wow, you've worked hard. Well, go for it." Yeah, you know, but I'm right. sure it's hard to looking at the age as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, looking at your peers doing it, and you're like, "Yeah, but I can do it as well." Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it comes. It comes with that, and 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 the, the sort of lifestyle that it's uh, that is that is out there already. Mm. Uh, it comes with pressure as well. Mm. To be honest with you guys, yeah, because yeah. you have to look the part. Yeah, you know, and I think that's where maybe uh, I learned mm. a lot. I yeah. would say now I would have kept the polo yeah. until for ten years. <laughs> right. Uh, save on fuel, save on tires. Yeah. Because you know, now you blow profile tires, you hit yeah. the pothole, and then you have to take out three thousand rand. You understand, so yeah, you—that's the life you end up living. And if you, if I think back about it, you know, I, I think maybe maybe I should have kept the polo right throughout my career. And when you're done, you've saved up so much and money, <laughs> and you've saved up so <laughs> much money that you can buy that car cash. The moment and obviously you know? just reward yourself for the, the, the amount thing. of work that you're doing. Yes. So as you're saying, it is a balance to say, do I reward myself and go all out, or do I really just save for rainy days and what if tomorrow never comes? There's always those questions. But talk about money. So you are one of the ambassadors for uh, the. Net Bank Cup alongside Coach Pizzo, Shaba, Stiger, as well as Tico. So, uh, what 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 are the responsibilities that come with it as a pack? Uh, I think the responsibilities that as an ambassador, you know, it's obviously to get the message out there to the people. Mm. Number one, the semi-finals is yeah. is, is, is this weekend. Right. So we to Derby is this weekend. So yes. obviously, ticketpros.co.za is where you get the tickets from. Yeah. We encourage people to go to the stadium. I know the Derby. You know, never yeah. disappoint when it comes to. To, uh, to 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 crowd attendance, mm. you know, and then mm. obviously also you know, uh, like you guys will invite me into the radio stations, and we have to come here and share uh, our ways. Like for example, we're sharing uh, about about money money matters, you Absolutely. know, small little decisions yeah. that has made yeah. a huge difference sure. in the long run. Sure. Mm. You know, so I think that's the most important thing. And um, obviously, as an ambassador, you have to behave yourself as well and be disciplined, be on time. Right. <laughs> you know, One so of the things, right? yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. all part of it. You know, and uh, but I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm having played the Net Bank Cup, having won yeah. it on three uh, different Lovely. occasions you know yeah. even before it was the Ned Bank Cup I won it with, uh, with, still with Super Sport with Coach Pizzo Masimani back in the yeah. day and here I am today again you know with uh, you and you Coach Pizzo him being your coach you know and, you know, and we're like ambassadors again together. and Teko Modise comes oh, so again cool. you know and, I love it for you, Clay. But now I, I want you to take us back to your preparation for the Net Bank Cup. It is now the weekend, as it's a Thursday now. You know you're building up to uh, the big weekend. It is the Derby, and Dane Clay is still a player. What are the preparations for you as a player mentally at that point? I think semi final. I think it, 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 it's a lot of hype when it comes to, to the Derby. Sure. So you need to to try and 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 just keep your emotions in check. You know, it's about right. staying calm. It's about waiting for the moment to come. Mm. It's about yeah. you start playing the game over in your head. You know, you yeah. start imagining the crowd is going to be there. Sure it's going to be full. Sure. You can't hear anybody, so you have to be aware of what's happening around right, you all the time. Right. You have to look what's happening. You have to try and communicate with your teammates. Uh, but the most amazing part of it is that when you get onto that pitch, you, you kind of zone out completely. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes you guys will see. Uh, on, it's so much. It's so noisy at FNB Stadium. Yeah, yeah. But I can tell you guys that I can hear the referee when he blows the whistle. I was about oh. to ask that. So, so it's a total zone out. Yeah, of you zone out the so of much. People on the yes. grandstands, yes. and all you're thinking about is the opponent, the game. We need to score, and of course you're listening to to yes. to officials on, yeah. on the side. And sometimes players don't don't won't hear the whistle. But I, I used to be so so <laughs> that I used to stop every time. I yeah. never used to carry on playing because right. I would I would hear and it's it's a, it's a distinct that is sound. That's you know, so you listen, so you crazy. yeah, so you concentrate on listening to that sound. Yeah. If it's a free kick or if you feel like uh, there's an infringement or whatever, yeah. you you want to hear that sound. And when I hear the sound, you you come. So to you guys stand. can't hear each other because of the crowd roaring around and chanting. 
you can't even hear your your your, your teammates your team saying, mates. "Listen, this is the plan." Unless you go closer to them, you can't hear anything. You can't hear information. You can't hear man on. You can't hear so, all so your so ears. Those, those, those coaches that are screaming on the sidelines are just wasting their time. And may as well. Yeah, your voice is going to be gone as a coach. Your voice is going to be gone after that if you try to scream. So it's better to call the player, give him information, share information. Yeah. Right. You know, and, get and close to each other, and yeah, that's right. how. You, that's how. You're but I, I, I want us to again focus on the Ned Bank Cup. So uh, it's known as uh, the, the David versus Goliath Cup, yeah. you know. So you guys are playing with unknowns. How, how does that feel? Because obviously if you're playing with a team that is within the PSL, you know the strategy, you know the players, you know, you're able to just go study uh, their previous games and all of that. Now you're playing with a team from Gabeja that you've never heard of in your yeah, life, yeah. never seen, you don't know who these people are. Uh, how, how's that for you as a player I, with the Ned Bank Cup? When I was at Pirates, actually... Um... We lost 4-1 against Maluti. <laughs> right. Yeah, in yes. the free state. Right, the free state. But that game I didn't play. I went, actually, uh, I was given off that game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, Big because, mistake. Because we were having a lot of uh, Champions League and matches. So uh, different players would get weekends off in, in, in different stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that weekend, I actually went to the Zoo Lake with my, with my, with my young ones, with the kids, with the yeah. family. And just had a good time. And I was following the match. Um, and, they lost. and I just like, whoa, it's 3 1, oh, it's 4 1. Yeah. yeah. Does you know, it ever happen, though, Dean, that you look at the team, you're like, ah, this team is small, man. There's no need to. Yeah, I played for. Prep. I played. No, no, no. You have, always have to prep. I played right. for Fitz, and we played against, um, uh, I think it was Magezi. Yeah. In, 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 I think it was in Limpopo. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And we won 6 0. I scored four goals. Yeah. Because I went onto that field and I said. So I you beat them even if they are underdogs. That's and my mentality. And that is the that's plan. My mentality. If winning. they must get six, they must get six. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to miss around. So, so my sports <laughs> editor is telling me that uh, when, when you guys were playing with uh, Maluti, uh, Lorch was one of the players that, that was playing for Maluti at that point. Yes. Yes. Yeah, correct. In the cup, correct. Lorch, right? 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 Lorch was playing for Maluti at the time. And then you get Dondo Stars as well. You had Baraka yeah, doing it as well. Yes, yes. And Baraka ended up being in the, in the, in the PSL. So yeah. what I've seen from Don Dole, and, and, and this is what the Nedbank Cup obviously brings. Mm. They will bring a team like Dondo Stars. They yeah. won the ABC, yeah. uh, the Motsepe League, where they yeah. come from. So they, they are in the playoffs to go to, to the first division. And I would like to see a team like that because you can see whatever they're doing, there's a mm. way of doing things. Yeah. They're organized. Yeah. Yeah, they're able to compete against Super Sport. They beat Super Sport. They beat Amazulu. Absolutely. They gave Pirates a hard time. They of course. Pirates two penalties. You know? yeah. So yeah. those are the teams that get unearthed. You know? and, mm. uh, and it's going to be interesting to see So, going so you forward. can never under-prepare and go, no, but this is just a team from wherever. We don't yeah, know them. Because small because because no, they, never. They'll, they'll probably show you. No, I think that, and that's the magic of, 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 of the Netbank Of Cup. the Netbank you know, Cup, the unknowns definitely. become known. You know, some mm. players will be signed. Right. by teams uh, that we don't know about. The oh. first round or the mm. second round, the teams, the, the, the minnows, uh, there's always scouts around, there's always teams that play against them and they will take one or two players and that's what mm. it's about. That's why they give their A game then because they are scouted this one. No, of course. Yeah, 100% that, that, it's an opportunity. That, that is the plan with the net back yeah. That is the plan. Uh, but now you've played for uh, Pirates and won this cup with them. Uh, which, which teams do you say will progress? You know, come the end of uh, the, the games for, for, for the same eyes. Uh, give us your score predictions. I'm very biased, so I'm going to go with Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Okay. I, I grew up supporting Pirates, right. so... So we, we you know, know I, that the W was happening there. Yeah, it's, you know, so... In Dean Kate's life. Yeah, right? and then Stellenbosch has an advantage of being at home against Egekune. Yeah. It can but go both can ways on the day, well. and that's cup football for yeah. you, you know. Uh, yeah. You can be in form, you can... If it goes to penalty shootouts, it becomes a lottery, you know. But uh, I do think um, Pirates still in Bosch in the final. Yeah. Score predictions for the weekend? Uh, I think it's going to be a close derby. Um, I think one goal will do it. One goal. Pirates, of course, winning it. One goal to Pirates. <laughs> and then uh, I think Stellenbosch will... One goal to Pirates. Yeah. 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 I think Stellenbosch will take it 2-1. Yeah. Uh, down, down, in, uh, down in Stellenbosch. Wow. We'll sure. see. We'll see. Dave. All right. So we can't wait. It is at the Net Bank Cup uh, semi-finals over the weekend. Dane Clayt has given us. So guys, to those that are betting, uh, yeah, if, if it Listen doesn't happen, because you've already taken uh, the advice that it doesn't happen, you know exactly who to call. All right. So, so, so Dane, what's your message to, um, you know, we, we, we have local football, which is a big thing uh, for us here in so We have tournaments that are so well organized. Uh, but we have young boys, you know, that are dreaming to be the Dane Clayt's. Uh, you know, of the future. Mm. So, uh, what, what what would your message be to them as as a legend? I think I, th- I think the message is obviously discipline plays an important part in sacrifice. Right. Those are the two things I think that has kept uh, my career, uh, the sustainability of my career. Mm. You know, so it's about sacrificing. Like I said, sacrificing includes uh, what you do, when you do, how you do yeah. it. 
you cannot be living the way everybody else lives in the township right uh, but you want to be extraordinary mm. you know for you to become mm. extraordinary you got to live a little bit extraordinary and that comes with people going to say hi ah, this one he thinks he's better. better than everyone. But you want to be better, isn't it? Of course, so that is the plan. Am- so have that ambition and don't be shy about it and follow follow yeah, your dream. Okay. Just carry on and, and work hard. The, 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 the biggest thing is work hard and, and how you got there, maintain that. Keep however, whatever you sacrifice to mm. get to, to a level, keep that level and keep doing the same things. Yeah. Even get, get even better at doing it. So if you're wow. going to do extra training, keep doing it. Sure. Mm. Do more. You know, right. Always sure. do, always do more. Don't do less. So, so recapping your career, um, you know, Adinkate, uh, other people that if you had an opportunity to thank, people that were really stepping stones, people that uh, really held your hand even when you thought this is not going to happen, people that you'll never forget within uh, your football career. Yeah, I think if I'm, <laughs> if I sound a little arrogant, I'll thank myself. <laughs> 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 I'm joking. No, that, that's no, I'm joking. Allowed. That is yeah. allowed. That, no, that no, you have to give yourself credit it's firstly. I think, yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that played a part, you know, the family, always supporting, always being there. Uh, my granny, my mom encouraging me when I was in the school of excellence was difficult. When I was yeah. 14 years old, I wanted to go mm. back home. A 14 year old boy, boarding school, different right. cultures, yeah. different languages. Yeah. So the first year was really, really tough. Uh, but with the, with, the, with the encouragement and the help, the second mm. year became a, a lot easier. We played into different tournaments. We went to North, to, to Ireland to go play in the Milk Cup. Sure. We went yeah. to USA. We won yeah. the KFC. So, mm. you know, the coaches at the School of Excellence as well, you know, because the late coach Mandela mm. Mazibuko, uh, yeah. may he so rest in peace. Mm. And obviously, Coach Sam and Bartow who's still at, at Sundowns today, you know, I think those are the type of coaches that that nurtured us so, so well and yeah, taught us so, yeah. so much about the game um, and, pre- and prepared us basically for yeah. for life as a professional. So I think those are the type of people that, you know, you, you have to be grateful for. Mm. You know, and obviously then, because Bobby Williams it used to be on the 17th coach of the national team, when I was eight, nine years old, I would train with him. Um, you? Okay. Myself and El Rio van Yerden, yeah. we used to train with him. So sometimes me and El Rio van Yerden would be alone with him. But training would carry on. Each one mm. of them, you juggle, you pass, you try shooting, you just work on technical your technical ability and and those are the people that sacrifice their time and effort and it's it's, it's my turn now to do that for, right. for grassroots football absolutely no, amazing i want to say thank you to the wife and kids as well so you stay out of trouble now yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you it's definitely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a little> thank, <laughs> you, thank you so, thank so, you. so much for such great contribution to south african football we are basically just here to give you your flowers and uh, you know as so it and surrounding areas you know and it's just been a thing so thank you so so much for everything and the work that you continuously do mm, right now mm. making sure that development in south africa is a thing oh, thank you so much thank nice you that is how we wrap up that conversation his name is dane clayton ladies and gentlemen